Can I start? Okay, so the reason why I agree with this statement is not that I personally agree that fathers have be oh, sorry, Rich, and fa um, that um, fathers have become disposable, but I've seen it in society how they have become disposable. For example, when I was pregnant with my um, son, um, and when I have been pregnant with my children, um, you see that they have more care about the mother yeah. on the forms. It's more mother, mother. And I get that because that's the law, mm -hmm. the law in this country. But how about have um, a law that accommodates both parents? Do you know what I mean? Um, to the point that when we win the, um, the hospital, um, the experience for my husband was like, hello, I'm here. I'm here, she's not yeah. a single parent. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm actually here, the father's here. Um, and they didn't really care so much to bring him in is more like, oh, um, if you decide to have a C-section, not if, if you guys decide, it's a like, mother, if you decide, it was like almost his opinion didn't matter. Um, so I think like where the, the father is present or is this, it's also almost this assumed assumption that a father doesn't want to be present, mm -hmm. okay? So that's why I, I wanted to bring that out. So it's not more of my personal, um, do I agree with that statement, but it's more of what I have seen, mm -hmm. um, even to the point of, um, um, even me being brought up in a, a single parent household, um, I saw how that kind of affected how I was with my children and to the point my husband had to remind me, excuse me, hello, gee, you're not um, a single parent. Like, you can call me and ask me to help you. You can say this and that. So it's almost, yeah, I, it's something that is sad that has happened, mm -hmm. um, but it is a, it, it's something that it's very prominent that yeah, dads think, don't get a say. Yeah, I think it comes down to the expectation. I think, again, if you've grown up in society or our cultural communities mm -hmm. where, you know, men aren't there or men aren't, you know, present role models yeah. or, do you get me, just present and consistent, mm -hmm. you grow up and sometimes you have a low expectation of men. Yeah. You don't, you know, lots of women use men abuse yeah. men there's no respect there's no mm -hmm. there's no love there's mm -hmm. because they haven't seen that exactly. so i think that's what it's a lot about that mm -hmm. yeah so i was going to agree i think society sort of a, um i obviously in the media they always even in adverts you tend to see sort of like that single mother with two kids and mm -hmm. they have like adverts catered towards single mothers yeah. and therefore that sort of creates those um sort of unconscious biases but i also think as well um Sort of almost from a, a black female perspective, mm -hmm. sort of that black strong female trope that exists, I think yeah. that also aids to the idea of having sort of a father being disposable. Okay, I'm yeah. a strong black woman, therefore, no matter what happens, you know, the responsibility is on me. Yeah. I can't show any emotion, all those things. I have to be the man and the woman. So I do think, especially like when you see all these strong black women, in a way, almost in my mind, I also see it as like, okay, be a strong black woman, don't really need. Uh, sort of yeah. like a man yeah. by your side. So I think that also sort of aids the idea of men being disposable. And I just think, yeah. And also, like you said, laws as a society, we're adapting to the idea of men yeah. being disposable. But I do feel like now, in a way, don't know if you agree, but that whole, I think women, like you said, with the whole father being disposable, I think they almost see men as a way, well, if you're not going to be there for me, I can have like money or like the lifestyle and those sort of things. Mm -hmm. So in a way, it's, it's changed, but it's still sort of prevalent, the idea of like, uh, you know, a man or father being sort of disposable, whether it's a dad or just in a relationship and stuff. And I think also there's also this whole idea of if a man is present, oh, well done. Yeah, being present. exactly. It's yeah. like, yeah. no, you're supposed, supposed to be, to be. present yeah. Yeah. kind of thing. So it's almost, uh, if I'm there, <laughs> round of applause for me being there and taking up to, you know, taking up my responsibility. And so much of if I'm not there, oh, we expect you not to be there anyway. So. <laughs> and with the mum as well, it's so demonised when the mum's not present. And sometimes it could be for mental health issues exactly. or they physically can't. And it, they're more demonised than a man who's perhaps decided not to be present. Or even, yeah. you never know, like in both of their situations or the, the financial hardship. So a man's sort of applauded, but then a woman is demonised when they're not there. Or they're expected to sacrifice everything to, uh, you know, to provide for the children and stuff like that. And I think that with that, men aren't always valued within the society. Do you get me? They're yeah. not respected. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's... There's no real love or, you know, support. Do you know what I mean? And I think we do need more of that, so. Yeah. yeah. And I think this, this whole flying the flag for femininity and for, the, um, for feminism has kind of like, well, you're a man, shut up, don't yeah, speak yeah, yeah. kind of yeah. thing. Um, 
and it shouldn't be so. Um, if we fly the flag for women, we can fly the flag for men. Yeah. It's for both people to just coexist together and, you know, build a better society. Because a society built with just women is not going to um, excel. Mm -hmm. And a society be based just oh, for championing just men is not going to excel. We need both to be championed. Yeah, the balance. We need the balance. Yes. We need the balance. Me, um, I feel like fatherhood is is uh, what's the word that they use like replaceable or disposable. disposable. My, it's the best thing in the world. Like fatherhood is something is something special. It's not. I can only describe it from my like from what I've been through. And my son is the best thing. I, I slander him all the time. <laughs> Let me not. But to put it aside. It's the best thing in the world, and only I can feel that. So nobody can tell me that if I leave, it's not going to make a difference, basically. That's what it feels like for it to be disposable. Mm -hmm. Like, whatever I do is going to influence this child's life. If I'm doing well, he feels it. If I do poorly, he feels it. If I leave, it's a burden on somebody else in his life. It's his mother's burden. And I feel like, it, as much as we're like, the, our relationship between the father and the child is is one thing, uh, the relationship between the father and the mother is also a, it's a mm. special thing in itself. Mm -hmm. If I can do the best for her, everybody benefits mm -hmm. and nobody can do that good, that specific good other than me. Like nobody can make her feel like a great mother. It's only I can do it. So, but the laws and stuff like that, like the facts that we go through, same thing, I had my child during COVID, so they didn't let me in. And I was outside, I was, I was suffering. I didn't go to none of the appointments. Like, we're not always needed, mm -hmm. which is fine. Sometimes you're just going to need your mother. I wasn't pregnant, only she was pregnant, so there's no need for me to be there. Um, even if it's schools, like, you're always kind of like the second thought. Mm -hmm. I do understand that. But. It should be so, though. Mm. It shouldn't be so. It's neither here nor there, to be honest. <laughs> if, if the mother's the one on the forms, cool. You know what I mean? Call her first. I don't mind. Don't call me. Call me after, after, after. <laughs> She can call me, you know what I mean? I don't mind being the secondary. She's the mum, she's, and she's done a fantastic job. So if that's her burden to bear, unlucky, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not begging for that rap. But I know that my, my role as a father is irreplaceable, and my father's role in my life is irreplaceable. And even if it's the absence of that father, that damage cannot be... Cannot be not, damage is not the right word, but that thing that is missing cannot be filled by it. It's not the same. It will always be something else. Mm -hmm. So just for that reason, it, I can't agree with us, um, with fatherhood being uh, disposable or it be, being becoming disposable. It's always going to be um, the A1. If you're a father with a daughter, that's your first love, you know what I mean? Always mm -hmm. be that way. And I was talking to my partner, I was like, the way I love my son now, if I leave now, he will never remember how good our relationship was, you know what I mean? He'll never remember that he used to wake me up every morning. But those, these six, seven months, they've happened, you know what I mean? And you can't take that away from me. He might not remember, but I remember. So even when you're a parent and your child was, you were in your child's life for a certain amount of time and then not, you remember that. That's something that stays with you. And it's, to call it disposable, it's like, uh, you don't know, as a, you know what I mean? As a father, you, you know, you can't be disposable. Everybody suffers if you suffer, everybody. Mm. So. Yeah. I feel like uh, you can't really dispose of something that's a piece of you. Yeah. So essentially, by um, name, essentially you, you can sort of say a uh, father is disposable, because I guess if you leave, uh, the woman can get another male, but essentially, after 18 years or after however, however many years, that child's nine times out of 10 gonna have certain characteristics, uh, features, certain traits that you have. And he'll grow up um, n never actually understanding Where it comes how, much, yeah, how much he resonates with the person you are. And yeah. It's live, man. Yeah. I definitely agree with what you said, like with the characteristics and stuff like that. I def like it's, it's a difficult one because you lot have made such good points in regards to just society, but I've noticed it's more so about society and how 
you're supposed to almost kind of almost put the mum forward before the dad and I think realistically I think it's it's in a sense it's disgusting because the dads that are out there supporting their child and are there some you've got some single dads do you see what I'm saying you've got some mums that neglect their kids and I think we haven't really touched on that as much um but I think it should be a situation where it's 50 50. I think men should have that respect as well as a dad as well and the fact that it's not even just they're there for the labour but emotionally and the fact that that's their child and I'm sure that would probably hurt a dad to even kind of think that they can be disposed of it's I think yeah I think it's a very touchy thing because I just feel for me I've got a really strong relationship with my dad I've got a really close relationship with my dad so I know for a fact he, even though I was brought up in the house with my mum and my stepdad, he had a, a big, you know, he, he, he kind of impacted me a lot. So a lot of, and I know I've got a lot of characteristics from him. So for me, I can't, when I look at, even though I have my personal issues with my child's father now, I still respect him in a certain way. I would still not disrespect him in a um, certain way because I know how my dad was with me so it's just yeah for me I think it's important that we as people kind of like kind of respect dads a bit more because even with father's day <laughs> father's day is just so disrespected like mother's day is like a, such a hype but as far as oh yeah I just got in my card um and I think we need to change that as a society and yeah I know there's other things that need to be changed in regards to the relationships between the mum and the dad but I think only we can make that change, those small changes. And I think even if, for me, I know my child's um, dad's not necessarily present right now, but I always try and kind of keep that, that door open. So I'll show her pictures of him. I'll show, because she was there at the beginning. So, and she does remember certain things. It's funny that people always think, oh, because they're so young, they're not going to remember certain things. They do remember a lot of things. And they're a lot more switched on kids nowadays. So I feel like it's very, you need to be very careful with how um, you kind of um, move around them. And for me, I will always respect her dad on a certain level because she, he gave me her, basically. If it wasn't for him, she wouldn't be here. So, yeah, that's just my opinion about it. I think no male, no man, no father should be disposed of.